Hello, welcome everybody. Let me start sharing my screen. One second. So we can begin the webinar. Good. And thank you for coming. Once again, we have uh, another interesting topic. Hey, this will be a request that was uh, from uh, uh, an old colleague, how to work with EFT. The EFT um, electronic fund transfer will help us to, to save a lot of time when it comes to do payments. And remember, when we do payments, we mostly right, need to perform right the uh, our transfer orders. We need to complete payments doing transfer orders. And I'm going to use my bank account card that is called checking. So the idea of this exercise is that we're going to get a bank that is going to help us when we do a payment with, with, with this entity to a vendor. Let's say I'm going to pay a purchase, a general expenses, you know, and then I need to select if uh, I want to export my file, basically, and then work with that same file in my bank account web page. The purpose of this is that you might be generating a lot of information when you do, when you do one specific payment. This will be the description, this will be the amount, the currency, the date, and so forth, which is in the end quite uh, complicated to then duplicate first in Business Central and then in your bank, right? In your bank website, then you would do the same type of payment with the same information that you did first in Business Central to then uh, have your accountability and payment process correctly done. Now, let me explain you then a little bit about my bank account. Here is the worldwide bank, right? Very good. Then I have very important, a branch number and a bank account. So without, with, with the Business Central, this uh, information needs to be saved in order to work with EFT payments. I'm going to explain you that uh, in order to, to, when we do a file, right? Before, uh, while we do a payment, what we're going to do is select a vendor, uh, select one or multiple invoices to pay. And when we are sure about what we're going to pay, we are going to export our bank a EFT file, right? With remittance that we're going to send to the vendor and it's going to track this specific information. That's why it is super important to have it, okay? In your own bank account. There might be others like general information of the bank, the contact number, super, it's good to have it, right? But regarding the EFT, we're going to then generate this one, the last remittance and advice number, okay? This is a number that we're going to get from Business Central consecutive number every time we run this exercise we send a remittance we're going to count three four this number is just a demo right the actual real number that you might get could be a, a alphanumeric okay so there are the remittance is basically the the, the the message we send to the vendor this is what i'm paying to you we send it through email by the way i'm gonna then explain you a little bit about it. But then we are gonna count with a numeric series how often and how many we are sending and this number is going to increase, okay? Continue to increase. Also, if you allow me, when we do a electronic fund transfer, then we need to select a country export format. This is very important because it could change from country to country, right? Here I have US, Canada and MX because just for you to know, I'm using a localization that is for North America. So it's not, you know, like these countries are here just because of uh, I'm showing them for the demo. So your business central might get different countries, might get different characteristics, but we need then just to select the specific country. And then if that is not, you know, according to your bank services, we can actually, of course, help with that. And then my export, uh, no, sorry. What I need is, ah, here is a, an EFT export format. Okay, this is very important. I'm gonna explain you this after closing the bank account card. But here is where we define. Imagine that a, you ask to your bank, hey, I, I, I review in a webinar that uh, a, I could actually use the EFT functionality, right? So we need to verify as well with the bank what will be the actual type of file they need. The rules they they will that they will apply for our file for us to create it, and that will be then sent it to the bank to work fine with it. Okay, so um, 
Let me see. With this in mind, what I can check is the export definition. That, uh, let me see if I, yeah, exchange, sorry. That exchange definition. With that in mind, I will just select the actual US EFT default format that I just created. I just wanted to show you, even though this is done by technical uh, people, typically, but it's not that complicated. It's not that cumbersome. We need to understand just the logic, okay? This type of format, actually, a, for the USA, as an example, is integrated this way. For instance, I get these basic columns, record, transaction code, customer vendor transit number, something that I forgot to mention that as well. We, we need a transit number. I'm going to explain to you the bank, vendor bank account card. Okay, and vendor bank account number, of course, I forgot to explain you that, and payment amount and so forth, okay? These are the columns that are required by the actual A file. And well, all of them re regarding the type of information that will be for the payment. From here, we can see that most of it is just text, actually. But here will be important, the payment amount is positioned with two decimal standard format in, in English, okay? This is in this case, the payment amount because it, it might be required sometimes for, for different countries, you might use points as, as decimals or commas, right? As well, the date might be initiating with month instead of the day in Latin America, uh, believe it or not, the date speaking with day, then the month and then year and so forth. In the USA, as an instance with this demo, I will start with the actual month and then, well, at the day and the, the year. So this is important, right? Because when you get your rules, you need to understand that here in Business Central, we define the type of file that we are actually gonna get with the characteristics of the actual a country and the, the, the layout of how you use commas, dots, your dates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why the country is super important. And on, not only that, if a, any given moment we can relate your actual a uh, columns the way they are called in your excel record type let's call it that way in the transaction code in this file that i'm about to export and then these are just a column caption okay of your same file how your file is going to look from one to tell 12 but here we relate each one to one field in business central so here you can see that they have the same name they don't have to it's actually according to your actual current file in a, a in Excel, okay? I'm just regarding the definition we do, okay? I'm not telling you if this actual nomenclature and the way this is accommodated is good or bad, okay? Remember that this for demo, the US EFT default is very often used in the USA, but for your countries, well, understanding that we map each field, we select every column and we define how your date, how your numbers are written and so forth. It's super, super, super important and we define it, okay? So it's up to you, but I strongly recommend that you actually contact your uh, Optimus uh, partner, of course, to then work with this. It's gonna be easy, but the idea is that we need to generate First, of course, this part. Look at this. This is separators with comma column separator. So this is what we actually do behind the scenes. Most of the time, technical people will help you with that. But that US EFT default exchange definition is already in our bank account to be used using that format. Then in the in the process, well. We have just indicated the basic information that we need. Let me see if I can see the in-transit number, but I forgot where it is located. Here it is, okay? Your in-transit number. So you might get different, let's say with a worldwide bank, I might get the different uh, accounts or with others as well, but if the in-transit number is from where, I'm going to actually uh, uh, take money, okay? Basically that would be it. Now, let me just go to the vendors. Let me just try to find a vendor that I remember or that I can see that has an open balance. Well, not plenty of them, a problem. Ah, uh, here I can see my balance, okay? Just to, to mention, because I want open invoices to pay. That's why I'm selecting and checking that amount first. And then I have the wild word importers. This will be my selection for today. Okay, so 
Every vendor that is created is, is going to get a name, your general information, such as the address, very important in Business Central, the email, right? Because we're about to send an email to this contact number. Then we need to select a payment method, which is in this case, bank, okay? For us that we are going to use EFT, okay? The bank transfer is just the payment method that we select as a default for this payment method, for, the, for this vendor, right? And then we are gonna use the preferred bank account code, okay? The idea is that your vendors might get a, one special bank or multiple bank accounts that you can use for to, to do deposits to the, to the vendor, okay? How do we work with that? Okay, the idea is that we generate the, the bank accounts. These are not my bank accounts that I have shown you before that will then be reconciled and uh, where I actually perform my cash flow analysis, how is the balance going, if I have reconciled everything, right? Um, and then do payments are receive money against the bank account. This bank account is the vendor bank account, okay? They are different, just to mention it. And then we, most importantly, we get then all this information, okay? This is the actual account. Uh, and then, um, this is just a demo, okay? From what I can see, I uh, as well have the addresses of return. What is important for us? Once again, the email, because we as well need to have a contact number, a contact person. Then we get the, once again, yes, the branch, the bank account, the bank code, and the transit number. You can, and you should review that with your vendor. What is this information about? What's your number? What are your numbers and so forth? Because this is super important. Once we do <coughs> this actual uh, movement, a, the in transit number specifically is gonna select to which bank account I'm going to be transferring. And then when well, we get other information, so call I bank, you know. But important for the setups that for today only use for electronic payments. This needs to be right enabled for this to work properly. Nothing else. So this was just part. Remember the bank, the vendor bank account. Okay, this four thousand is for the vendor bank account code that I have assigned with all this important information that we are explaining here. So as you can see, configurations are not entirely complicated. Okay, you you can get this info from your vendors. You can ask your bank, in, well, independently of the, of the country where you are, what type of format information they use. And we have, as you saw in the, our data definition, okay, once again, multiple, multiple a type of formats and one should apply for you, okay? I have only, well, basically for, for the USA, but I can see that there are some others for Mexico, for instance, right? Once I did, uh, once, okay, okay, in a previous, and for a previous customer, I created one for the name. Okay, but here is your data exchange definition. Okay, this do, do not only works for exporting payments, EFT. Let's say that if you think of only as well, why not to work with files import export for your bank reconciliation? That would be super good. Okay, it's gonna save you a lot of time. We can define it as well. Okay, just for another topic, well, we can work with the bank reconciliation. Now let's go and review some of the exercises and see how it works, okay? For that to happen, then I'm gonna do a payment. And if this is the first time you are checking Business Central, we have what we call the payment journal that is going to allow us to do different type of payments for the vendor. The first payment journal that I will create in this example Okay, it's gonna be called Noe. So in here, I can just select a vendor that I can pay, which is what word importers. I saw that it has the configs that I look for, looking for, and look at this. Here is the recipient bank account, which is going to be Amex, and the payment method is bank. So that's fine. So in this case, remember that the document type that this journal payment journal is going to be always, you know, selecting will be the payment document type. And very important, your actual date. Okay, so just mentioning the basic fields and what I will be doing in this case is just a simple record of a payment. Even though this journal has a lot of different capabilities, I'm just going to work for a span, okay? The second is the bank account that I will be using. This is my internal banks, okay? In this company, I have the Noe Bank, one for uh, Shopify is for other, but we have Shopify, by the way, integrated. Well, Bank of America, Worldwide Bank, 
and well, these savings worldwide bank. Two bank accounts, they have, remember, different transit number, okay? And then one for savings and one for checking according which account you want to work. Remember now these words in transit number help us with that. And now that I have done this, I will be just selecting what is the bank payment type that you're gonna use. We have checks and we have electronic payments. They somehow work similar in Business Central. We first select one vendor to pay and the invoice or invoices, and then we need that ex exact information we are processing then to export or to maybe do a print with that information, okay? If it's going to be a check, well, basically we print the check with your layout, with your stuff, etc. And if it's going to be an electronic payment, we are going to export a file. It's not going to be a check. It's going to be, let me just show you in a moment, a type of file that your bank is going to accept. And as well, we're going to send a remittance, okay? Very nice. So to which, which will be then my, my remittance, okay? Let me just before continue and finalizing this payment, I need to check something that will be very important in this moment for us in this exercise. What I want to do is look at the layouts. Let me remember where it was because I have dozens of, here is, dozens of different venues. Don't blame me on that. Okay, I have vendor remittance advice, okay, which is the number 399, remittance advice journal, will be sent to Mr. Noe, okay? This is my actual email. And as well, I have my remittance advance, okay? So you will need these three document layouts for the vendors that you will be then managing with this, this functionality. So remember, you just need to select here the or the, the report ID, okay? And just by selecting, just select the same numbers, which will be for our remittances, for entries, the journal, and the export electronic payments, okay? Then <coughs> my email. This is the only config that I will be looking for in this area, okay? And if I'm not mistaken, well, I think that will be that will be doing this. Um, and for my bank accounts now, I think that I just need to show you as well one last thing. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, it must not have more right now. Uh, it's 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 okay. I'm I'm just looking for some configurations that are. I don't want errors in my exercise, right? But I think it's great for that. Okay, so important, your emails, because what we are going to do requires for this vendor to get that email information and the reports that I told you that we are going to use, okay? So everything is ready now. I have a payment. Let's just review. I want to do a payment in on this date to this vendor, Wild War Importers. They generated, the, or we generated the Amex bank account, vendor bank account. And then we got our checking bank account as offsetting account. So I'm gonna use that checking to make payments. Okay, bank payment time, electronic payment. And then we can just go. In this journal, we have two options to prepare then my payment. I know to which vendor I'm going to pay. So I can use Business Central to suggest me what to pay based maybe on a, a budget, on uh, maybe as well information that you will be uh, receiving a list of multiple invoices. I don't know. That's why we use the should suggest vendor payments, okay? And then we can use as well just the manual apply entries function, okay? This will be for manual work for your own personal and manual selection of the invoices you're about to pay, requested maybe by this vendor normally. But let's just take a look, okay? From this vendor, I can see that I have all these invoices. Remember, this is a demo, okay? And we always use the external document number, okay? So your vendor might be in front of me in this moment, I'm gonna be the AP clerk and he, <coughs> This vendor is going to ask me, let's say, let's do the first invoice. <coughs> Please pay me the invoice number 13. Okay, that is not a problem. And we can select, okay, manually, I was saying, okay, that actual record. And with this, this number that I have here is the actual payment number. The one that finishes with 33, as you can see, okay? 
This is the number that was generated by the system when I started to create my previous payment. So I'm linking the, no payment, uh, the number of this payment document to the invoice 10. A220 with external number 13 because the vendor doesn't know my internal invoice number generated in Business Central. He provided an invoice with his own number 13 that I'm about to pay. And very important, how much you will be paying? In this case, this is the remaining amount. We need to pay attention and the currency, of course. That's why I always include the currency here in this area below or beside the amount. But well, once, of course, we, we understand that we must do that, okay? Then we just generate the apply and the amount to apply. I would say that I will pay 100%, okay? But he, this field that is in blue, you can edit it. Just maybe you will be paying 1,800, just input the amount manually, okay? So I have just selected this one and the total amount that I want to pay in this case. And I'm gonna click, okay. So this second step is just to select the invoices that you will be just, paying okay here then i'm gonna get the total amount to pay and that's basically it okay so from this moment the thing is that it's super easy to work i would like to then just for instance uh, i'm forgetting where my my functions are what i want to do now with this before posting okay posting means that okay i'm going to register in business central that i have paid this vendor or well in the accounting side i'm actually posting my ap the, a, 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 for that vendor deducting the debt basically right that's it and then let me see because before doing that process you need to export your actual file let me leave this in back then yes Okay, your file to you so you can provide it to your vendor. Okay, so I'm going to click on export. And this is what is going to be generated from the a bank account number. How many copies you would like to have? Let's say I always keep two or three at least just to have a copy and print company address if you desire. What will be the output method? Okay, here you have multiple printed, a preview only pdf email so i will be it's just sending it down through an email and print remaining statements if they apply okay if well basically i haven't yet sent this vendor a statements yet okay so remember very important if you don't have your bank account selected please select it that should be the one that you have of course in your in your journal right don't use other banks for that that would be the idea of the exercise. You don't have to do anything else. Maybe just use this same setup to remember how many copies you need. And then I'm gonna click on okay. So now the idea is that this will be then generating this, this so-called EFT file, okay? Let me actually just say it here in my, this is where we can support for Wildwood importers. There, okay. Because I'm gonna delete it later. But the idea now that I have it, let me just open it. Is that we generate this type of file, okay? That would be basically the idea that we do. So uh, the, the World World Bank true value, uh, all these numbers, right? All these values are representing the actual type of payment. Here I can see the, the bank and well, I can see here other other numbers, right, that will be generating exactly that information, right, that will be the idea. And with this, well, this is the actual file that you need to take now to your website and upload that back. The idea is that when you do it, this same a, a, a transaction will be posted in your bank. So we are going to save time and we don't have to, a, I don't know if, if your a bank or a, a web page is very friendly to, to use and select the same invoice, same amount, same payment, same date, or whatever. You would need to do it manually in your bank, but with this file, you don't have to. You just basically will a you just basically will a, 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 a import them. Well, and as well, we are going to be able if you do then uh, this type of information, well, in, in for other banks, right? Let's just focus on the type of file that each bank will look for. And with this, you are going to be able to process this very fast. And we, this was just a payment, okay? So after this, I just finished this. What I will do is just pause. And with this, I will be 
finishing within business central, okay? Um, check transmitted must have, okay. Let me see. So nice. Okay, before I can post it, this is a number that I have missing. Let me see. It was part of the configs that I need to complete. Let me just review. Check transmitted. Check printed, that's fine. It's like something was missing here for the transmission of the file. No problem. Payment and reference. Let me see if there's a, a, a field that is just missing a curve, just to follow that error. And uh, Check, check, check. Let's go. Let me see behind the scene what is going on. I have done a correction. Let me just select another line if possible. And my logics. Okay, let me just select now. I, I, I saw an error, but I will be able to correct it just right now. What I will be doing is go to another journal. Okay, let's try to do it here. Same information, same type of basic a, a transaction, okay? What I will be doing is just look for the, once again, the wild word borders. And let's see if my bank account is selected. <coughs> I think that is regarding to the batch. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, important now I'm checking here, okay? Whenever you create a batch that will be used for payments, like I will be doing now, we'll need to do the following. I'm going to click on allow payment export for my general journal. Very good. And as well, we're gonna need, a, otherwise we're gonna, we might receive an error a balanced account in your general batch, okay? Remember, I have actually done, done that before. And this is, sorry. And I had errors sometimes, you know, like you don't have your bank account set it up. I, I was actually exporting an EFT before. Uh, we might sometimes face different type of errors. And believe it or not, if you don't have the balance account here, which is just supposed to use your batch defaulting your preferred bank account to be inserted, okay? Even though you insert the bank in your journal just like I did, it's going to show the error anyway. So please insert a balance account number, believe it or not. That's a business central a system, a, a validation, okay? And then once again, for your journal, just allow payment export. Very good. Once you verify that it's in place, I'm gonna continue with the balancing account here. So I'm gonna pay the wild word importers with the bank worldwide bank. Very nice. And well, just last but not least, I want to select the invoices to pay. 
Remember, and we can see here that somebody else is working with the same vendor and it's doing another payment, okay? So I might, I won't be able to select this one, the same transaction. And that's something that we just work with the same way in Business Central, okay? So nobody will reuse other type of transactions. Let me just change my number. And if you have issues with this, numbers you can remember by the way let me see okay and i forgot the back payment type here just electronic payment, sorry for that. Very nice. Fine, fine. Okay, so let me just try to export it again. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that is not an error, but maybe a bug. Let me think. And bank now is not exporting the file. Okay, it is exported now. Okay, we just get the same file once again. And let me see if I can just post it. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'll keep another number in my life to this, okay? There you go. And they did it. Apply entries. Nice, it did the amount now. Okay, so what I want to do, remember that I need to export, post it, and send to the vendor of remittance, okay? That will be important just to mention. Let me just save this. Okay, so I'm generating for another record, right? That is generating now, okay, the payment general journal. So I have now two payments that I generated for this vendor, right? And I want to send the remittance. That would be the second step. This is the actual email they received. And then here we just click on generate EFT file. So this is a new window, generate EFT file. So once you could continue, you know, working with your AP documents, okay? So let me just close this window. I, the, the error is just solved, right? Basically, just that. Now, I want to just, I, I to solve it, I did two payments, different payments to the same vendor. And the only thing that I just need to do is to just get the actual text. Uh, 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 in order to do so, then I'm going to go and generate the EFT files, which is going to send out this information to your vendors, okay? So I have generated my, EFT files, by the way, and I will just leave in yes. But here, what I will be doing is receiving my email. Where is remittance advance? Okay. And in the end, and sorry for the error, just to finish, what your vendor will be receiving will be the remittance ad advice. Okay. For, for as an email, by the way, let me just get that email first. Nice. And here it is, okay? Okay. I have my remittance advance in this area, okay? Here's your remittance advance. Uh, here you are gonna be able to see 
uh, well, all your information for the inputs that you actually plan and the deposit, okay? This is what your vendor will be receiving as a remittance advance, okay? Advice over. So <clears throat> with this in mind, the idea is that you are going to be generating and exporting this information. The remittance advance will be sent to your vendor to export your file, import it in your bank account. And with that, you will be generating your EFT files properly. That would be basically the idea of this process, right? There's no complication. It's just actually showing what can we do, but the actual work needs to be done, at least for the mapping for your files and how your bank wants your services, they want this type of services to be done with the format, file format. Well, just tell us how that is as to your bank. We can help you with that. So you can just follow these simple steps to do, to, to do your payment, but exporting as well your EFT information, right? Okay, so thank you very much for your time today. This is, was a, a very short a topic, actually, just how to do so, how to do the export and ready test for your vendors. What is the definition uh, for your export format? Uh, which type of sales you would need to do to perform for the bank and for the vendor? The EFT normally. Okay, so I just want to thank you for the time. Thank you very much for your time. This is just a, once again very short webinar. So see you then next time so we can continue with another topic, right? Now, if you want to contact us, please send us an email at Optimus. A, the operations and then as well i'm going to write you my email here in the chat so if you want to send me a request to do a specific topic that you might want to review please send it to that email right actually i do my webinars from the actual customers uh, requests always right a uh, so if the apr i accommodate them but Anyway, we just do what our customers need to know, what Business Central offers. I might be then focusing now on online services, on online POSs, if you want to say, on Shopify, online. If you want to connect as well with websites, right? What is Business Central offering, right? And how we can, for instance, how we use Shopify, how we can integrate with another website to then actually control items, customers, vendors, inventory, and so forth. Okay, sales, online sales. So that will be it then for today. I will be continuing. If you need a specific topic, let me know. So thank you very much for your time and then see you in the, our next webinar. Thank you for the session today. Bye-bye.